everybody. I am up and about feeling a little bit better, still having some stomach issues, but my feet feel great. Yay! So we didn't do a lot of vlogging the last couple of days, but we have the whole thing about scary movies. People seem to really be interested in that and telling us what their favorite scary movie is and what is the movie that scared them the most. So we are going to continue with that and we're going to have Kevin go over some of his favorite <clears throat> scary movies and also there is a um, curse behind the poltergeist movies that a lot of people may not know about that Kevin does. So we're going to have him explain all of that to you guys as well. So hope you guys like it. Hey, so uh, we started something the other day that uh, got us all kind of uh, thinking about horror films again because we're we're really big horror fan people. Um, and we used to be bigger horror fan people, but when we got married and things started uh, just moving away, we had little time to watch the horror films. So I, I started my horror collection on VHS like most people did. And when it started to, everything started to go over to DVD, I started selling off my VHS collection in anticipation of uh, getting it on DV. Some of them, I never replaced, which gets me a little upset, but uh, I still have quite a collection up here. <clears throat> well, so I'm just going to go through some of them. Some of the people have actually talked about them already. Um, someone said that one of their favorite movies was at the Amityville Horror, which is an excellent story from the 70s. Um, this is the original Amityville Horror that had James Brolin and Margot Kidder in it. Uh, came out in 79, I do believe. And being in the L.A. area, I ended up knowing some of the people who were actually in it. Um, uh, my best friend dated one of the victims in the opening scene. You never see her face, but it's kind of an interesting story. I don't remember her name. And then, of course, there's the remake that has... Uh, um, I can't even read it. What's the guy's name? I don't know, but he was hot. Okay. So... <laughs> So that was good, although it didn't get a lot of a, a good press, unfortunately. Um, and I, I thought it was very good. We also have a lot of the other Amityvilles, the Possession and the Dollhouse and junk like that. Um, some older stuff. One of my favorite, um, I think this is a Spanish horror film, uh, Tomb of the Blind Dead. There's several of them. I only got two of them. Uh, the uh, movie... Um, the Fog was actually based on one of the Blind Dead movies. Uh, it had uh, you know, zombies coming out of the ocean, so it was kind of stolen by... Is that the Carpenter. original Fog? This is the original Fog, which I liked a lot more than the remake. Um, somebody did comment about remakes aren't always great. Some of them are okay. Um, one of my favorite um, um, low-budget films, The Evil Dead by, with, by Sam Raimi. Of course, had one of my favorite uh, uh, goofy actors, Bruce Campbell, in it. I'll go watch anything he does. Um, Isn't that the one where they strapped the camera to the wood, pl piece of wood? Right. It was really low budget. They T they actually put a camera in the middle of a of a a, uh, two, by a two by four. It was twenty feet long and just ran through the forest with it. Discovered that it uh, sat in the, on the fulcrum of the board and it was like a gyroscope. It didn't budge, so it just looked like a little low, low level gyroscopic camera thing. He was only like 20 years old when he did it with a zero budget. I think they shot him on a 16 millimeter. Uh, I think his um, uh, chiropractor funded it. <laughs> so you learn all these things from... Uh, um, there used to be a show called The Great, uh, the uh, Strange Incredible Picture Show. It went the whole thing over Sam Raimi. One of my favorites of the old ones, The Changeling, Boy, George I love C. Scott. That one. That is completely different than the Changeling with uh, Angelina <clears throat> Jolie. Yep. Very first movie that I saw with Valerie, Darkness Falls. That is very funny because I started dating Kevin in 2003 and I did not own a DVD player. <laughs> I still was in VHS. So Kevin bought me a DVD player and bought me Darkness Falls. So that was my first 
scary DVD movie that I ever owned and the first scary movie that we watched together. So Not a bad movie. No, I kind of like I liked it. I liked it. Okay, um, nobody mentioned any of the zombie originals, which of course I've been a zombie fan since the oh, 60s. Well, not too many George people Romero, are zombies. Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Uh, he, all of his other dead movies, and of course uh, his uh, cohort in crime, who ended up doing the uh, the Living Dead uh, series, which is here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> all think are very good. I, I like them all. Some of them are get cheesier as more. Um, Ghost Ship, good one? Yeah, Ghost Ship was a good movie. Uh, of course, Halloween. We have many of the Halloweens. I think I'm only missing six. <laughs> Five and six, uh, meh. They kind of deviate from the uh, story. But one of the things that we're going to do later on, since we live in Southern California, I know where all the, um, the uh, locations where they were shot, including the, the Mike Myers house. So one of these weekends, we're going to grab the camera and, and take a little day trip out to South Pasadena where the entire movie was shot. And uh, I'll show you all the houses that were used, including the original Mike Myers house, which is still there, but it's been moved. So that'll be fun. Probably closer to Halloween. What else do we have? The Haunting. Of course, the original 1963 Haunting. This one happens to be... <clears throat> this is our, our personal... Favorite. And several of our viewers. Yes, creepy, creepy, scary movie. It was probably a brilliant idea to, to film it in black and white, even though color was was uh, available at the time. A lot of people <clears throat> nowadays do not like watching black and white films. But we can't, we can't even get a, uh, Megan to watch a black and white film. Trust us, trust us, trust us. <clears throat> if you watch this movie, the original haunting 1963 it's black and white you will not regret it it is a fantastic movie so it was actually directed by a guy named robert weiss who actually sat down with shirley jackson who wrote the original story and and um, wanted to get her take on it uh it has uh, some great talent in it julie harris who i think did a, an incredible um uh, eleanor uh, Russ Tamlin, of course, who is Amber Tamlin's dad. Uh, Russ Tamlin played in West Side Story. Yes. He was a dancer. I don't know if he was a singer, but he sang. Did he sing in that? Yes, he did. All right. Uh, probably it's the best. The, uh, the remake, eh, it's okay. Haunting, a Haunting in Connecticut X is a very good movie. Okay. There are several versions of A Haunting in Connecticut, though. All right. House on Haunted Hill, the remake, is actually pretty good. Uh, I like the remake on the, that one. The original House on Haunted Hill is classic. It's uh, uh, William Castle at his best and, and goofy props. Of course, Vincent Price, it was filmed at a house uh, in L.A. Um, I forget what it was called. It was one of the Frank Lloyd Wright houses. Legend of Hell House. Love it, love Richard, it, love Richard it. Matheson's story. Richard Matheson's uh, well known for uh, writing um, with uh, Rod Serling in both um, um, the uh, Twilight Zone and his uh, Night Gallery shows. He also uh, wrote the um, the movie The Raven. If anybody saw that, it had um, it had Vincent Price, um, Boris Karloff. And Jack Nicholson in it. It was a comedy. Uh, he also did the, that movie, wrote the movie um, Stir of Echoes that had Kevin Bacon in it. Oh, I love that movie. Another excellent ghost story. Uh, <clears throat> Italian movies. Uh, Dario Argento, probably my favorite Italian horror film, Suspiria. Uh, filmed in a vivid color. Incredible. It was more like an art uh a film than a horror film, but it's it's really creepy, really scary. It's, the music was done by a group called the Goblins that that was just hard to sit still through. He does lots of other uh, excellent horror films. Tenenbra, um, uh was the um, Profundo Rosso. All these excellent movies. I 
and I'll get a conversation going about uh, spirit about uh, make him. Sure, make sure you file that right <coughs> away. Thank you. Ah, of course. Need I say, and of course the one that was actually done by Stephen King that was so so, but um, it would follow his story better. Silent Hill, like those, was based on video games. Stir of Echoes, Thirteen Ghost. The, the remake, original. Also the, no, this is the remake, which is also very good. Yeah. The original was more of a kid's thing. Again, a William Castle movie. Yeah. The remake was pretty good. Did the lawyer split? Yep. He did. <laughs> he did. Yeah, older stuff, someone talked about the Gates of Hell. Uh, it's a Fulci film. And uh, he did some of the most disgusting Italian horror films. And some of it's... Uh, is classic now and it's funny to even believe that uh, Fulci was the guy who did all those uh, spaghetti uh, Hercules movies back in the 60s so it's the same guy so now that you know that I'm a complete horror nerd now get tell the conversation us, started tell us the curse <clears throat> behind Poltergeist 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 is a movie it's actually produced by uh, uh, Steven Spielberg it was directed by Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper is the, uh, is the guy behind a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Toby Hooper had a hard time with Spielberg, from what I understand. Um, the, um, the little girl who uh, played the uh, uh, in all three of the movies died halfway through the third movie. Um, in the second, the sequel, the second one. Um, the uh, older sister, wasn't it? The older sister was murdered by her boyfriend. The uh, um, in the second movie, they had a uh, a shaman character who was a, an old uh, uh, Indian American Indian character actor who died um, soon after making the movie, and it had a, a priest character who was dying of cancer when he made the movie who died either just before it was released or right after. Um, there's all kinds of stories swirling around that, that uh, some of the bodies that were shot in the uh, second movie were, were real, which I kind of doubt because it would be cheaper to just uh, manufacture themselves in the prop department. But there's, um, they talk about a curse, a uh, poltergeist curse, that uh, everybody who, people keep dying. I don't know if I believe, buy it because the main characters are all alive. Hey everybody, guess what time it is? Time for Photo Bomber Shoutouts! It's the Photo Boomer. Uh, boomer Bomber. Boomer Bomber, bomber Shoutout! Someone, someone else said Photo Boomer, I like that one too. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> so. Bones is in the. Uh, got dressed up for horror films. We seem to have, have really stirred something up here. Yeah, we have. And you really stirred something up uh, here, I'm sure. I hope I didn't bore everybody with my uh, horror collection. Probably did. I'm going to touch base on, on that again in <laughs> just a little bit. But first I want to kind of um, let Stephen Sandridge and Daphne Sheehan know that it wasn't up until about two years ago that we thought Bootsy didn't have a voice. <laughs> She never made a noise. Kevin Kevin didn't even know I had her at first. It was about three weeks before I even knew she had she had boots. Yeah, we dated for about three weeks and Kevin would be at the house and he didn't even know I had her because she didn't meow. She never made any noise. I never even seen her. <laughs> then one day one day I was in the kitchen and she's sitting in the middle of the kitchen and she just goes <laughs> That's Made how she no would noise. be out. She would she just, just open her mouth. She just open her mouth. So, two years ago, about approximately, we don't know what it was. All of a sudden, we're sitting here, and she starts her meowing, and you, you heard her. <laughs> That's what she sounds like. Of course, the same t same time she started piddling on the carpet. <laughs> And now it, at six o'clock every morning, <laughs> that's what I wake up to. And so it, we assume it's cat, kitty senility. Is what it is. <laughs> Isn't that right? So shout out. And Dana Bisa, I promise I will make Kevin practice and say your name over and over and over again so he I can say it. I got it right. 
she says you do get it right, but you like have to think about it. Say it without thinking. Dana Beesaw. There you go, Dana. See, you got it. Okay. And I want to tell you guys a story of what I did to my sister. Remember what I did to my sister? What was it for um, Friday, Friday the 13th? 13th? When Friday the 13th came out originally, and I had gone to the movie theater already, and I had seen it with friends, and my sister Connie wanted to go and see it, so I went with her to see it. And I convinced her somehow, I don't know how, it's been so long ago, to sit in the back row. So we're sitting in the back row, and I'm like, Connie, I gotta go to the bathroom. It was right at the end. I said, I gotta go to the bathroom. And she's like, you're gonna miss the ending. I said, I already seen it. I gotta go to the bathroom. So I get up and I'm walking, you know, people are moving so I can squeeze through. And the person on the very end starts laughing because they see me duck down and crawl behind the chairs. So I get right behind where my sister Connie is. And just as Jason jumps up out of the water and grabs, I don't remember what her name was, grabs the actress, I jumped up from behind the seats and grabbed my sister. I mean, mind you, the whole studio screamed because Jason jumped up and grabbed the girl. But my sister Connie screamed so loud, everybody was turned around and looked at her. She almost peed her pants. She was so scared. She wouldn't talk to me for like a week. She would not go to the movies with me for the longest time after that. It was hilarious. But I used to do things like that to torture my sister all the time. I'm so sorry, Connie. I love you. Please forgive me. So. <laughs> oh, shout out. And one other subject. We have... Nine, did I say? I think nine. Nine days left until we go on our next Ghost, ghost Investigation. And we are really, really, really excited about that one. So, can't wait. And it is time for Neighborhood Community Shoutouts! Yay! You start, Gus. I started yesterday. You did not start yesterday. <laughs> Jack Adams! Katie Caroline! Uh, Megan Goss! Karen Fry! McKenna's World! Lucy Bone! Madison Collier! Daniel uh, Scott! Christopher Trade Show! Play Bad with Usernames! Selena Love 487, also known as Brian? Yeah. Selena G Love 487, also known as Brian. Very good. Tom Show! Madeline Carl! Rex 25059! Uh, ZZ Epic Dude ZZ. Did you get that ZZ Epic Dude ZZ? Just making sure. Uh, Dana Besaw. <laughs> Beauty Queen 12. What are you laughing at? You go, uh. That's because I was trying to find my place yeah, on the right. list. Yeah, right. You hear that? Beauty Queen 12. Marin, 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 Brenda Sorry. Smith. Sorry, Marin. <laughs> Daphne Sheehan from PEI. Canada. Canada, you're telling the wrong line. I didn't have enough room to write it. And the newest addition to our list is Lucy and Autumn. You are all part of our neighborhood community, each and every one of you. We love you all. We would not be here if it wasn't for every single one of you. Thank you. We love you. Thumbs up. See you tomorrow.